Hey guys, this is Samir for Playing Digit, and today we have with us the NVIDIA Shield and we're going to be taking a look at the performance of this device. Now, uh, to start with, the uh, NVIDIA Shield runs on Android 4.2.1 Jelly Bean. It runs on absolutely stock Android. And since this is a dedicated gaming device, we will come to the gaming bit of it, but in a minute. Let's get the worst out of the way. To start with, it's really difficult to use this as a generic Android device and it's really not meant to be used. But in case you want to, you do have the browser out here. You can control uh, the keypad through the mouse that is available through the right analog stick. Control it and click to whatever you want. But that is a little uncomfortable, just like it's uncomfortable to browse the internet through your gaming console. A good thing is, however, we can use the touch screen to navigate the device. And uh, since you can connect it to Wi-Fi, there is no 3G option. You can connect it to Wi-Fi and have the internet running very smoothly on the 5-inch display. Since the display is such good quality, it's very bright, very vibrant, especially in full brightness. The display is a treat to consume content on, be it if you're reading text, watching videos, or just playing the games. The screen is an absolute highlight. We have seen a display on the PlayStation Vita, which has the OLED display, the blacks and certain colors look richer on that. But that doesn't mean that the Shields display is low by any standard. It's beautiful, it's brilliant, and it's vibrant. Everything we need for our gaming needs. Coming to the other Android features of the phone, you can do anything you can on any other Android device on the Shield, except, of course, making calls. If you would like to consume multimedia content, you can put your videos on a micro SD card and play them out. It's a real treat watching videos on the device. You can even watch your favorite videos of YouTube. Getting some more negatives of the Shield out of the way, not all the games available on the Google Play Store are compatible with the controller form factor. The best example being games such as Temple Run. Temple Run will run in portrait mode on a device. So on the Shield, you'll have to hold it this way and controlling the game is most uncomfortable in this scenario. Uh, the device does have the gyroscope and the touch screen, but still playing the game on the shield is a little uncomfortable, especially since all the weight rests with the controller. So, of course, since you are purchasing such an expensive device, you would not be just playing Temple Run on it. But that doesn't mean that all the graphically great games are compatible. You even have games such as Real Racing, which are not compatible with the controller. So as you can see, no matter what I press, apart from of course B, which takes you uh, to the pause menu, none of the other controls are going to work on the game to control it. So if I need to steer, I still need to go traditionally. Again, games such as Real Racing 3 will be a little uncomfortable to play because you need to control the game in its traditional way in which it was intended to be used on a smartphone or a tablet. Games such as this, of course, aren't the most comfortable to use on the Shield. Now, of course, coming to games that are compatible with the controller, we have here Riptide GP, which is, of course, a graphically heavy game with the water effects and stuff, and the game does look really good on the Shield, and it does support the controller. So I'm using the triggers behind to accelerate and brake, and, of course, the analog stick is being used to steer. These are traditional controls that you would find on most racing games on the console today and it's good to see their implementation on a device like the Shield. Another game that we really really enjoyed playing on the Shield was Dead Trigger. It's a first person shooter, it supports the controller well, the graphics are at their best and you truly truly get the first person experience on an Android device with the controller. First person shooters in particular on tablets and smartphones have been criticized because you need to use the touchscreen and they really aren't that accurate or not a lot of fun to play but with the addition of a controller the games do give you the feeling of playing a pc or a console title on the go and it's a lot of fun
Of course, the Google Play Store is loaded with a lot of Android powered games, but if you really want to take advantage of the Nvidia Shield, you have, of course, the Shield Store, which is primarily a place where you can download all the Shield specific games that will work with the controller. As you can see, the list of games isn't very large. You have games such as Asphalt 8, Shadow Gun, Dead Trigger, Riptide and more available for you to play. Um, you also have the ability to purchase some console titles which have found their way onto mobile devices. Some noteworthy ones of course are Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, Max Spain, Grand Theft Auto 3 and a lot more. Some of the games out here are really 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 great giving you console level quality on a handheld on the go and it's really nice to see these games available. We have also tested the shield with a PC streaming a PC game onto the shield uh, our colleague Nikhil who has GeForce GTX 660 on his system tested this and we will show you how that worked out as well So to conclude, we'd like to say that the Shield is a very, very, very interesting device, especially since streaming games is the future. We've seen Sony say that you'll be able to stream PS4 games onto the Vita. You can already use the secondary display on the controller of the Wii U to play the Wii U games. And it's great to see that the Nvidia Shield not only streams games from your PC, but also has a good library of games that work with the dedicated controller. Android has a long way to go before it can match portable gaming such as the Nintendo 3DS or the PlayStation Vita, but the library on offer is pretty elaborate as well. Whether it will appeal to the hardcore gamers is something we will figure out once Nvidia officially launches the device in India. If you are interested in picking up one of these, you will have to order it from abroad as Nvidia has shown no plans to launch the Shield officially in India as of now. In our hands-on experience, we are really happy with what the Shield can perform. The speakers are extremely loud, the display is vibrant and beautiful, and the controller feels very robust, as robust as a console controller, if nothing less. Considering the power under the hood and the amount of time we've been playing, we've been playing for a few hours now, the device hasn't become very hot either. It isn't noisy as well it's quite relatively quiet and a very smooth performer yes android aspects such as browsing the web etc may not be great but you can watch videos on it on the go and the speakers are actually louder than some laptops we've seen so that's that's pretty good overall the shield is a very very interesting device and we would like to see what the future holds for it